E E E E E E E Estou só fazendo um teste aqui Teste som Libras Não, não, calma
nós somos a Tim. E imaginamos as possibilidades para fazer uma diferença na vida das pessoas. Temos a energia para crescer, para inovar, para transformar o 5G em realidade. Energia para realizar um trabalho impactivo com propósito, criando novas oportunidades para criar novas oportunidades e possibilidades para nossos clientes. Nós somos a maior rede de conexões e com o 5G, e com o 5G, nós vamos fazer um impacto em mais pessoas em mais e mais pessoas no Brasil. We are more at Tim. We are the next generation has arrived. Our commitment is to always be ahead with courage and daring to anticipate the future, making the difference to the whole society. It's in our attitude, in our market vision, in our daily lives. We keep on evolving together by building a culture that is more and more inclusive and plural. We democratize connectivity and social inclusion, turning technology into a world of possibilities. We are protagonists of the changing that change the world. What we do every day has value and importance to the whole society. And this is how we are contributing to do social change and evolving to be the most wanted carrier in Brazil. We are Tim. We are adding our multiple talents and the different stories of people who are challenging themselves and learning every day. Who imagine together with you the possibilities of making more and better with respect to people with courage to innovate and change technology into freedom. We are next generation. This is our Tim. Good afternoon. Welcome to Tim Talks Experience 2022. I would like to also share with you who are all here in this stage. It is a very special moment to me. This is where I started my career, coming back to this house, which once was mine. My first internship was at Tim Brazil in 2002, 2002, 20 years ago. It's a lot of memories. I see some friendly faces. Those of you who are watching us, so right at the start, it is very good to be here. But let's keep going. This is our opening event, and the program of Tim Talks 2022 has actions which will go until the end of November, but I will not be spoiling you out, because afterwards we're going to be having more details. So let's start. What a beautiful view do we have here, the Modern Art Museum of Rio, one of the most beautiful postcards of the city, incredible architecture, and it's also one of the most important cultural institutions of Brazil. It is a special day. We are connected with over 10,000 people throughout Tim and the whole society, which can see the event on the website or YouTube, Tim Brazil. We have people that are gathered here in the most important headquarters in 11 cities watching us. And how good it is to have so many people here, 300 people sitting here. We're going back to our face-to-face -face events, the energy of everyone, thus giving us their support. In the previous years, Tim Talks, we had development that is never ending. We connect everything that matters. We imagine possibilities, we imagine the future. Today, we're going to be talking about a future that is already a reality. We're going to be talking about transforming connections. This is the model of Tim Talks 2022. And we're going to be talking about our intentions, our proposition, things that change people's lives, that change businesses, and that generate positive impact in the society. This is why we brought an important team of guests who are going to be sharing their initiatives and making it happen for the role of companies in the generation of social impact. 
Let's see what's coming ahead. We will have the CEO of Team Brazil, Alberta Griselli, Maria Antonieta Russo, VP of People, Structures and Organization at Tim. We'll have an inspiring keynote speech of the Washington Commanders National Football League. Jason Wright, and also a panel with Alberto Griselli, CEO of Gerando Falcões, Rachel Maia, which is a, a counselor of different companies, founding of the Capacita Institute and a member of the Consulting Council of UNICEF Brazil. And Cris dos Prazeres, social activist and executive coordinator of Vina Web a business that does social technology. We're going to end with a show that's going to keep you off your feet. Those of you who are online watching us, stay tuned. Are you all prepared? Yes. So let's go together. Because Connections Transform. To start this beautiful talk today, I'm going to invite on stage the president of Tim Brazil, Alberto Griselli. Hello, everyone. Good morning, afternoon, everyone. It is a pleasure to be here having a, as the master of ceremonies and employee of ours, once Tim, always Tim. That's wonderful to have you here. So today we are with such an important topic to your company which is about connectivity, is about having a proposition, a, an intention. We're in a beautiful venue, a center of culture, education, art, which has everything to do with today's talk. And it has everything to do with our brand. After all, this is a democratic means, it is a diverse means, an inclusive means, just as music, so it's part of our brand. When we talk about technology, we talk about technology and everything that is around technology towards development to the society with a positive impact in people's lives. When I officially started at Tim as a CEO in 2019, I was the chief revenue officer, actually, and one of my first tasks was, let's try and recrystallize the values of this company and the intention of the company. This was one of the first initiatives that I had. After this initiative was successful, what happened is that there was a new brand signature, Tim, imagine the possibilities, and together the choice of Isa, the singer, as the ambassador of Tim Brazil. That came together with the values of our brand. So the intention, our intention, the intention of our company, meaning the soul of what we do, is what? Maria Antoriette is here, Jason, everyone is here, you will remember which is to evolve together with courage to transform technology into freedom. So technology is the core into freedom. Technology into freedom. These are connections that transform in the end of the day. So this technology into freedom is what we do every day in many of the activities of our company. This is what we have. Then we take connectivity to all municipalities of Brazil. We take our service there. We've seen in many occasions the effect of the coverage of our service in people's lives that we didn't have before. Every day to people have, but some people don't have it yet. But when they do get the emotion, the social inclusion, digital inclusion, as Paulo Humberto showed in a few previous meetings are really touching for the effect that they have. Now, a few days, we are using 5G as a major player being launched, many people involved. We are covering democratically. Every city was going to be having 5G. A few capitals have 100% coverage in all neighborhoods. 5G, there was a neighborhood 
there was the poorest of Sao Paulo. What's the name? Mario Ingeniero Martins, I think it's the name. Now we do have, right off the bat, 5G coverage at the poorest neighborhood in Sao Paulo. So technology at the service of freedom and empowering of people. Availability of service is what we have, number one. Second of all is the availability of having digital services that we put on top of this coverage. Then we ta what, what do we have? Entertainment, Netflix, up until Prime Video, for free to all clients that are prepay. We also had a nice initiative with much pioneering uh, endeavor, which was to gather connectivity with credit during the pandemic. It was a commercial success. Nowadays, we have 5% of a digital bank. So we have intention, we have business, we have results and outcomes. I'm going to go back to it. And most recently, we launched connectivity with education, meaning employability, and in many ways, we have a partnership with Ayanguera that I'm going to be talking about that. We have posi positive women, mulheres positivas, but availability of the service, as I said, value added to our clients, and it's not just communication, it's time. Also sponsorship in the, in the, in the agenda, we believe. We have value in sectors which are king to us. Music, for instance, soon we're going to have Rock and Rio. Rock and Rio is the cherry on top because one of the largest musical events in the world with 5G. Well, anyways, but it's to an audience that can pay that ticket. The end of last week, we had uh, two days fully free at Praça Mauá with a full program. So we go from a most exclusive event all the way to the democratization of music in several areas in Brazil, including Rio de Janeiro. We also have several other social initiatives that are the Tim Institute. The intention is to disclose science and technology for youth. And lately, the launching of Favela 5G, the 5G slum. We're going to be talking a little more about that later on. So when we look at our intention, technology, to transform technology into freedom and empowering people, we do a lot already. Today, we are inviting in the talks for later on a key people that do that and that do of it their own life mission, meaning people whose mission in life is to have a positive impact in society. So those are people that are going to be discussing with us, debating their experiences, and are going to add to our view in relation to our commitment. And then we will start a new journey, a new pathway to be defined to give more strength to this intention inside Tim. But I spoke a lot about 5G. Everyone's talking a lot about 5G. 5G is high of a fad. Everyone talks about it. Uh, 5G, the five fingers of our hand. Each one has one G. I spoke about this in two occasions. This is the third time I talk about it because in the end of the day, those are the guidance, the strategic guidance towards the next generation team where the commitment with society is one of the most important elements. It is the soul, the intention of our business. So I want to reread with you the five fingers in this context. Please put the five fingers up. The first finger is a thumb, G, 5G, scientific meaning is Tim Brazil. We are one of the major private companies in the country. We have 8 million clients. We have over 5,000 employees. We have over 250 spots of presence. We have the largest mobile coverage in the country. Anything that we can decide to do, we have will have a gigantic impact. Anything that we want to focus with a positive impact in the society will count on this strength of Tim Brazil. The second finger, that is, which is 
the pointer, the pointing finger, is ambition, which is our intention, is to leave a legacy to the Brazilian society. We spoke that the order, the word of the day is protagonism, the second juice, meaning we speak in many occasions that we want to be leaders, and this is the way forward. We are inviting leaders, inspiring people to complement our mission to increase the size of our inspiration. So this is to the intention. The third topic is the third G, the middle finger, is to generate value. So when we talk about value added, we talk about the generation of value to our clients and to the financial market. This is to generate value to the society, being the tripod, clients, financial market, and society. What is the secret to not getting lost in the trade-off, doing one thing's good and other things bad? I believe a lot is to design strategies that have as an objective to reach the tripod, meaning a business strategy that can address the client, the financial market, which is the outcome of the company, and also the society. So I'm going to give an example looking at Maria Antonietta. What is it we do? One of our values is respect. Respect is, in, is translated into what? Respect for clients, respect for ourselves, to our colleagues, to the society in general. Respect is translated into every feud of inclusion and diversity. So inclusion and diversity plans that we have today, as I see, are fully integrated in the company. So we have internal policies, commercial communication, we have the support for our sponsorship, the choice of our influencers, the choice of our MC today. So it's part of the company. It is a difference that we make, which is fully inside our company. So we are able to set up a strategy with social impact by reaching a factor, an X factor, with a positive impact to the society. This would be the third, the, the middle finger. The fourth G, the fourth element and finger, which would be the secret of it all, would be what we call one-to-end, end-to-end management. The ring finger is to put this impact on the ground, in other words, hands-on, making it happen, end-to-end, -end, putting this as the objective of the business with everyone around supporting this objective. And last but not least, the pinky finger would be the criteria, would be the secret. Your attention or attraction is to make something as being a possibility turned into a reality, meaning everything we do every day by challenging our beliefs into pushing forward. This internal view, but then we have all stakeholders involved which are going round and round, which come with us to be able to power up our actions. And in the end of the day, we have our clients that can be catalysts of our situation. So if we think today, we spoke internally, like best supply, best service, best network, the client chooses us for that. The client also chooses us because they see in our brand a true commitment with a legacy to the Brazilian society. So this element, this is the difference that we make in our brand, which is why the client chooses us. It is involved, engaged with the process together with us. So five fingers, five uh, axes of our strategy. Each one of them is different, but all of them are needed to get to the next generation view. We have a leverage in our hand, which is the 5G, which creates possibilities that we can imagine and implement, as always, being this is just the beginning. And then we can use the debate today and later on in the whole program, which we're going to prepare for the next weeks. Thank you all.
grande G de uh, grande desafio. Big G né? of a big challenge, okay. right? Muito obrigada, Alberto. Thank you, Alberto. Você volta mais, logo mais para o painel que a gente vai fazer aqui. Uh, in the next panel with our guests. See you. Agora eu convido para falar like sobre essa maravilhosa to experiência about this chamada Team Talks 2022, a vice-presidente de pessoas, 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 pessoas culturas e organizações do Team Brasil. Por favor, vem para cá, Maria Antonieta. Maria Antonieta. Uh, like, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. To everybody. Uh, how nice to see these people here, our colleagues, our guests. A, a, a big virtual greeting to everybody who's following us in Brazil or abroad. I'm nice talking with a personal note. Stephanie said that she was coming back after 20 years. She began her career in Team Brazil. I'm very touched also. It's my fourth uh, event since I got to Brazil. It's, it's the third open to community. I'm very touched with always the same way because it's always the same adrenaline. Uh, Maria Antonieta. You came here last year. Uh, yeah, I, there were 10,000 people. Can't, can't anything, can, nothing can go wrong. Imagine if I do so, some, if I speak that Portuguese word wrong. Imagine if the connection falls down. If everybody that we invited, nobody shows up. Uh, you keep imagining all these disasters may happen. So I have always the same emotion. Uh, and that's why I'm so touched. Especially for two reasons. First, I feel enormous responsibility of the success of this journey and, and the whole journey. A responsibility in offer something that can really add value to each one of you and to each one of this person, the, the people here. And also because so much responsibility for our work, because the work is, or, is organization, everybody. But to organize this machine, we start working much, much before, involving much, a lot of people of all the directorates of the uh, team. So I'd like to begin doing a big approach to all the colleagues that every year contribute to this wonderful team talk. Okay. Voy a comenzar con una frase I'll start with the, the sentence that I, of the closing of last year's meeting. You all know that uh, Team Talks has a goal to create a moment of open reflection, open to everybody, on what the impact of the that impacts the economic, social, cultural life of a country. And we talk about this. We cannot avoid talking about allocation. In 2020, we spoke about the future. We said something very important, which to think of the f future is to have to do with our attitudes in the present, whether individual or causative. A company that does to today will determine what we'll be doing in the future. So we, nowadays, many things that were meant for the future are present now. But this also refers to our attitudes, our behavior. That's why last year we decided to choose one sentence, a symbolic phrase that will synthesize what means the future in education. And I chose a phrase of Marco Mix that says, education is our passport to the future. As the, the future belongs to the people who today are getting ready to, to face it. However, and, but access to technology is not everything. When we talk about future, imagining that it's a, a digital future, a technological future, no doubt, the first, thing, first thought is I must offer through technology, I must offer democratization of knowledge. This is a powerful thing. Imagine technology that allows something extremely powerful, which is education. But to, to place infrastructure and to enable technology does not mean directly 
make a correlation between the evolution in the country and the society of a single person. To, to stimulate this uh, challenge, I, I brought some data I'd like to share with you from our VP of strategy. The data says that Brazil is one of the most connected countries in the world. We all, we all know this. It has a huge percentage to show you. 81% of Brazilian people use internet. And Brazil is the third place in the world in t time of using internet per day, and the second place in the in the world uh, ranking of uh, lasting uh, in the internet. Our level of digitalization is very high, and. Brazil has a very high level of digitalization. The average Brazilian has a high level of digitalization. Uh, our, the, the daily use by in banks and health is very high. So we can say that Brazil is a digitalized, digitalized country. However, when we want to see the level of digital alphabetization, Brazil is only in the 36th place in the global ranking of digital inclusion. So this is a percent that does not match the previous one. When we talk about technology and education, we need to work, uh, to, to work with, the, with these two in indexes, because like, uh, like we're going to, gi to give a powerful car, uh, you choose the car you like. To, uh, I choose Ferrari, OK? Uh, let's deliver this car uh, Ferrari to a child. A beautiful child, uh, and the Ferrari has gas, okay, we, but if you don't teach the, the child or whoever to drive the Ferrari or to use their potential of a powerful machine, you're still not working uh, for the digital inclusion. You're working for to enable something important which is the availability of infrastructure, which is very important. It's a possibility to uh, reach any neighborhood, any place in the world with your infrastructure allows one important thing, allows each one of us, whatever race, whatever social level, whether economic level, has the power of be part of the world through what? Through the knowledge. And so. And the true challenge is how to follow this evolution. This evolution means that imposes upon each one of us, in this case to the companies, in this case we're talking about the role of a company like ours, uh, and how can we uh, offer, besides of infrastructure, also a follow-up of a cultural evolution, a solid one. This means the, the question and the thought of Team Talks this year to use technology to maximize the knowledge of the people. And, and this comprehends also, when we talk about digital technology, we talk about technical knowledge, we think about uh, uh, capacities, capacitation. So when we face a change of this kind, uh, we need to, to know which are the limits uh, of the individual and collective potential. Potential. Why? Why education is a powerful uh, weapon? Because, like any weapon, you must know what are the triggers and the limits and their potential. To know whether, if we ask, for instance, which are our behavior in the social networks, and ask whether when we imagine an enlarged infrastructure in places with low human development, are we asking if the people are really being included on how to use technology and how to maximize technology and how to learn in a social network? For this reason, the, the, clima, the, the climate, the, the, the humor of Team Time 22 uh, is, will have as focus of every panel, how to potentialize in every aspect technology and cultural evolution.
This year we'll have, like in previous years, a very rich panel, and we decided to keep that multidisciplinary mode because we believe that putting together different points of view, academic, business, professional, this is in itself an added value. However, in order to offer the possibility to everybody, to all panels, we decided to distribute every talk instead of one month in three months. And so starting from next week, every panel, every, every month will have two talks and we'll see which are the panels, uh, this year's panels. Uh, the TikTok experience 2022 in uh, September 15 with our Vice President Renato Ducredi, Business and Innovation, which as external guests, guests he will lead a panel about the impact and opportunity in our system of startup and innovation, facing the challenges we have in the investment market. So the focus will be between innovation and startups. At next, uh, with our CTO, Leonardo Caperillo, that will lead a very interesting panel, a virtual versus real, and how technology will impact the business models. And October will be open by a panel that I will lead. Invite, we invited some people from the academic world, academic work, and of the business world to talk about the evolution of the work model from a different point of view, uh, based on the people uh, uh, look, what are the, the social cultural triggers that can limit evolution of the way of work or, or to drive it further. In October, we shall have another panel led by a couple of people, our vice president, uh, and Director of Institutions and Press Relation, Mario Giurettore, and our Vice President of Business, Bruno Gentile. A very interesting panel, because we'll put together the concept of energy uh, some se by several points of view. And the panel with external guests will touch issues like environment and the economy, focus on the uh, energy in a very wide, wide uh, aspect from point of view of sustainable sources of energy, then going through circular economy and human aspects involved in this context. November, we'll have a panel of Fabrizio Bozzetto, which with his external guests will talk about the evolution of the business models and the impact on this impact upon the client, discussing the importance of client in the journey and in, in the uh, uh, market uh, uh, reach. And we'll close the journey of 22. Our CFO, Camille Faria, will talk about the, the definition of our digital strategies. Closing, so our journey 2022 with a focus on strategy and values. So the whole program, as usual, will be uh, shared in our YouTube channel. And you'll be able to follow in team.com.br. Those of you who know me know well that I like to close with a sentence that synthesizes, synthesizes the year's event. And this phrase, uh, I was in doubt what sentence to choose, so I chose those of a Brazilian pedagogist, Paulo Freire, and that synthesizes very well the aim of Teen Talks 2022. Education does not transform the world. Education changes people, and people change the world. So it becomes clear to me how Tim evolved from a telecom company to a company of technology and vocation and focus on people. So everybody is invited to see this panel. I'll do a little break of 20 minutes that hydraulic stop is not yet the cover. We'll be back in 10 minutes, OK? Thank you.
Bom. E falando so, de propósito, talking about intention, about generating and promoting actions that impact people in the society, we have a special guest who is going to be bringing a bit of his trajectory and how their projects have generated impact. Our guest is from the U.S. I will now start speaking English so I can talk to him. But relax, because those of you who need translation, we have simultaneous translation into Portuguese. And those of you who are virtually talking to us, translation will happen automatically, like the Oscars. So let's go. Those of you who are here, just click on channel one. And you will be getting translation. Simultaneously. Everyone's ready. Let's roll. I'm going to invite our guests. He is a former partner at McKinsey and Company, co founder of the Black Economic Institute, a research entity that analyzes the racial wealth gap and the prominent voice in public discussion regarding racial equity in corporate America. He is the president of the Washington Commanders in NFL, the first black team president in the history of the NFL, and currently is the youngest team president in the league. Directly from the United States, welcome to the Team Talks experience stage, Jason Wright. Thank you, thank you very much. It really is my pleasure to be here. Um, I'm excited to be here with you all um, because I see what you're doing today as something that can change industry in the long run while building a great business for you as well. Um, my name's Jason. I'm the president of the Washington Commanders, formerly the Washington Redskins. Um, I've been the president here for two years and um, as noted, I was the first black team president in the NFL's history, but it was significant to me because I also played in the NFL for seven years as a running back uh, from 2004 to 2011 before I went to business school and then became a partner at McKinsey. And so for me, being able to be in this role as a first and to advocate and create an organization that supports our players all around as people is something that's been important and groundbreaking. But while all that is great, and I can talk about some of the wonderful things that we have done for our players, allowing them to get engaged civically, to have helped laws pass around um, aspects of civic reform in our area. Um, I could talk about that all day, but I do have a business to run, just like you all have a business to run. And while we should be good citizens of the corporate community, we should focus on social impact. We should all be focusing on racial equity because it's the right thing to do. We should also be focused on it because it's the prudent business thing to do. And so when I took over this organization, it was in a bit of a crisis. Um, we had very low organizational health and culture and years worth of accusations of sexual harassment and other issues in the organization. Um, we were also in a decline from a business standpoint. We had a declining season ticket member base declining sponsorship revenue, and we needed to turn around the business. We also needed a new name. Our old name was considered a racial slur by many in the native and indigenous community in the United States. And we also need to find a new home for ourselves. Our stadium is out of its life cycle in 2027. And so we need to build and construct a new stadium. No shortage of things for me to do here, but that's why I took it on. And much like you all, I like taking on big and complex problems. But in order to do this, I knew that I needed to build a diverse team. Um, I needed to have people that had different backgrounds and different ideas, different professional experiences, people who grew up in different areas of the country and the world to be on my team so that we had um, great debate and great problem solving within our organization because the problems we were facing were challenging and very real. I also needed demographic diversity. Our leadership team is now 40% women, 50% people of color, and that background diversity 
has made us smarter. It's made us look more like our fans and our customers, and it's allowed us to have a great business transformation. You know, our organizational health in one year's time went from bottom quartile, very low performing, to above the median and in the top quartile for the median entertainment industry. And that is a great milestone for our team to have accomplished in a short amount of time. But we did that by turning around the organization and putting new leaders in place, not being able, not being afraid to say goodbye to people that didn't share our values and to promote and reward people that did. It also allowed us to have a great business turnaround. Um, we are leading the NFL in growth of our season ticket member base in the sale of our premium suites. And even as our organization faced a lot of tough headlines in the press, we grew our sponsorship base by about 30% year over year. And we're going to hit our highest revenue since 2005. It is a major milestone for an organization that was struggling. And it is not in spite of diversity that we were able to do that. It's because of diversity that we were able to do that. And that's the way that I know diversity is going to stick within my organization and in the NFL. And while we're going to be able to continue to do good for people who typically don't get opportunities to be in roles like mine, because when something is connected to the business, when diversity, when what is right, when social impact also helps you make money, not only will it be lasting, it doesn't depend on me and my views, it doesn't depend on you and your views, it's benefiting the bottom line, so it will continue going forward. But also, it encourages others to do the same. When I was put into role, I was the first black team president in the NFL's 100 year history. In two years time, there are now four of us, uh, the Baltimore Ravens, the Las Vegas Raiders, and as of two weeks ago, the Denver Broncos. And it's not just because it's now the cool thing to do to hire black people. <laughs> it's because a team took a chance, chose to hire differently. And me and my team have shown that diversity is good for business and good for the bottom line. And so we will continue to see other teams make different decisions in the future because of our success. And so that's my encouragement to you. No matter what your role is in the organization, no matter who your clients and customers are, no matter where you're sitting, you have the opportunity to craft your team differently. You have the opportunity to be comprehensive in the hiring process. So you're seeing all sorts of talent. And then when you have people in the organization, you can be professionalized and inclusive and make sure that you are making sure everybody has a chance to succeed and that your problem solving processes, your decision making processes are those that allow everybody to participate, not just to make people feel good, because I don't actually care that much. It's about getting to the better conclusion. It's about getting to the better answer. And that's going to build your business. And then if you are running your team well and you're having success, other people are going to copy that. And the next thing you know, you have the good work you're doing multiplied across your organization, multiplied across your customers and clients, and multiplied across the country in the business sector. And so I am excited for you all today. I know you have a great panel after this. That's much better than me talking at you. I hope to come down there soon and spend time with you all um, in the future because I do love a nice trip to Brazil. Um, but we do have a wonderful time. Know that you have an ally here in the United States. Uh, we should be your favorite American football team. So I'm counting on that now that the commanders are your favorite team. Um, pull for us this year and I will talk to you soon. And uh, in fact, non-diverse organizations will fail to exist in the future, but in the New Year future. As a lesbian founder, as a female founder of startups, I have seen uh, many, many people coming to me after I came out, and I only did it after I sold my, my fintech to a big bank in Brazil. And only then I could see the importance to have a safe, uh, environment in the company where you spend most of your life at, right? Thanks again, Jason.
Agora sim, o Team Talks faz o um intervalo de 30 minutos e volta logo mais para esse painel we'll imperdível com Alberto e seus convidados. Panel, Alberto e guests. Thank you.
So we are, we're back to our Team Talks to 2022. May I remind you, everybody, that we're, we're broadcasting live from the Museum of Modern Art in Rio with this opening event, with a big scene to think about the role of companies on generation value and impact upon society. So we got one of the most expected moments, and a panel with Alberto and its guests. Alberto, please. Uh, Please come to the floor. And now, one of the most influential uh, CEOs in Brazil, she became an advisor to companies, consultant to universities, and author of the book My Way Until Chair Number One. She is advisor to different companies, and on the cause of education in Brazil is always in her radar. She is a founder of the Institute Capacitas and member of the Council uh, of UNICEF Brazil. And also, she's still doing mentoring with groups of women who support women. She writes on the Hasa mag magazine and the Global mag uh, uh, newspaper. Our next 
Next guest, Rachel Maia. Be welcome. And with a brilliant journey involving publishing books, talks in schools, and uh, uh, being considered by the World Economic Forum, one of the Brazilian young people can change the world, and part of Global Shapers, and also in the list, Forbes list is one of the 30 most influenced people in Brazil. Uh, let's welcome Edu Lida, founder uh, of uh, his uh, as NGO, be most welcome, um, Edu. Ativista social, uh, social activist acting since the 90s as a consultant to social projects in the Brazilian slums and making dialogue between the public service uh, companies and drillers. She's also a coordinator of Final Lab. A, a business for technology and social impact for young people in slums that takes care of young people in 24 states of Brazil. She has already graduated thousands of young people. We let us welcome Zoraide Gomes, better known as Cris dos Prazeres. You are welcome, Cris. So, first of all, I'd like to know a little bit. I know some of the history of most of you, but so that everybody will be on the same page, uh, I would like each one of you to tell a bit of your story. Uh, please, you start. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Congratulations, Tim. And thank everybody present. Uh, I heard wonderful things here. I am Zoraidic uh, Gomes. My name is Christos Brazilis. And, and Doctor, I'm very happy to be a woman on, on impact and technology in this moment where we're fulfilling our normal role. It's nice that we are able to fulfill it. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Rachel. I'm 30, 32 years, 52 years. I'm the mother of Maria and Antonio. Yes, I'm an advisor, but lately I'm an advisor to, to hassle the life of this, uh, this planet and to do things a little wider. And so I'm very, very happy of having the previous call with Alberto to understand, yes, this is a a space, a space to be with much pleasure uh, to have this talk. That's how we share women with uh, women with such company. Um, it's a honor for me to be sitting next to them. And Edu, who's a friend, who uh, a longtime friend, sometimes ignores me. It's not so bad. We are together in our journey. One supports the other. And so now I hope to be closer to team. Uh, I hope to be a, a team client. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. I truly hope we must support those who are uh, who share with us the cause we believe on. And next to me is Edu. Being next to Edu means that Tim supports the, the goals I support, the collective. Uh, one for all. Edu, looks like you, you can do away with the presentation. Uh, go ahead, please. <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm so happy to be here with Chris. My congratulations and thank you. Rachel is a great friend that does everything I always ask her. 
her capacity. And I had the happiness of uh, having dinner with Griselio. I, I, I was a very hard week. Uh, Griselio, what's the size of your goal? So we began to talk so much of B, 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 B. B. I, I, was, I was touched. So I meant to have a dinner to put together five million. And I said, okay, I'm, I'm going to double my goal. And, and last night we did a dinner in Sao Paulo. We broke all records. We, put, we managed to harness 20 million reais. So I'm connecting to, with Tim to get inspiration from you of a large company that dreams big to do something even bigger in the Brazilian slums. Thank you. Very good. So, as Alberto said, the role of, of, of the large companies, large corporations, uh, one of the biggest corporations in Brazil, our role is to drive any initiative of impact. And you, you dedicate your lives to such initiatives. I'd like you, uh, like you, Edu, please start talking about your, your NGO generation hawks, how Gerando Falcões is, in your view, today and for the future. Uh, I founded Gerando Falcões 11 years ago in a square in my house. I was born in a slum, in a shack uh, of uh, my, my father went into the crime world. He was, he was arrested. He, uh, all the banks that tried to, to rob were all, all present in my dinner. My father was arrested for bank robbery. And all the banks he tried to rob, they were sponsoring my night. So, so that was an audited bank robbery. <laughs> what changed my life is that I had a great mother who told me every day, my son, it doesn't matter where you come from, what matters is where you're going to believe on your future. And she pushed me forward, and the result is that I founded Gerando Falcões. It began in one slum, and nowadays, in this, this, we reached, uh, we are present in 6,000 slums around Brazil, covering over 42% of the, all the slums there is in Brazil. So Gerando Falcões grew in the pandemics alone. We fed more than 5 million people. It's like if we had fed a whole city, a Campinas city, during a year. We mobilized more, over 100 million reais to do this act. But our vision is to defeat uh, poverty, our mission. Why do we exist? Why do we dedicate our lives is to transform the poverty of uh, slum in a museum piece uh, before uh, Elon Musk colonizes March. Rachel, it's a long uh, career, a successful one. Uh, Rachel, I'd like you to tell a bit about your journey. How does your initiatives link with your aims at the moment? Uh, nowadays, uh, now that you are 20 million better than myself. Uh, your actions are wonderful. Uh, well, I'm 28 years now. Uh, I'm 20 years, 28 years of leadership. I began very young. I started with age 14, but also I sat in the seat of leadership, having left Brazil, because my English was the book is on the table, <laughs> and so I decided to get the money and invest in myself. Uh, we. We spent a year and a half in, in, in Canada. I went to Vancouver Island in the Pacific Coast, Canada. And when I came back, I came uh, looking for global companies so I could put to practice what I learned. So for me, it was very important. No matter the weight of the stereotypes in our region, not only in Brazil, but in the whole Latin America, but still, I didn't, keep, I didn't want to matter too much, having the doors closed. No. So after three or four months, I managed uh, to do a, a pro I managed to join a 
pharmaceutical company called Novax, and I managed to, to go through the tests. So I say some five years there, I was CFO, first as controller, and then CFO of the business units of contact lenses. And that was very important for me because it was my first MBA in Brazil. My project is called Capacita, uh, melts with my journey of education. E education is power, knowledge is power. But in that moment, no matter how much knowledge I had, the market still demanded too much. Uh, and my, the university I did was not a first class uh, university. So in order to climb up for new positions, uh, it was made clear to me you have to you have to go to first class uh, university. So my first uh, MBA in, in the F, F, FAG. So I decided to, to leave the company and climb new horizons. So I stayed nine months in Boston. I did my second uh, Harvard Business School. I came back to Brazil. I took up the uh, president. Uh, I was CEO of Tiffany, the jewelry Tiffany. They, they, had, they had no knowledge. People didn't have this uh, uh, knowledge. The OH turn in Brazil was important. Tiffany still, uh, uh, Tiffany was still uh, the underdog. Uh, so I put Tiffany in a position that it comforted in the world since 18 something. In Tiffany, I did my third MBA in the U USP. And that, from that moment onwards, I understood that nobody could question my my curriculum in the matter of academic laurels. That was very challenging because my skills did not go beyond myself, no, ma no, no matter how important they were. Opportunities were not for me. So I still had, I had a small, a small child. <laughs> I, I had a, I was following this process. I went on, I came back to Brazil. I took the, the I was head of Prodora. Prodora, I did the expansion of the brand. It was another brand that was not known in Brazil. I, I, I did the expansion. I, I launched e-commerce of this company. It was very challenging because it's a Danish company. And the Danish company did not understand I was going to sell rings by e-commerce. In, in, in the jewelry shops, uh, we were pioneers in no, nowhere in the world. Uh, it was e-commerce for sell, selling uh, jewelry. I was a, I did a 3D uh, uh, showcase. It was very successful. And then I did one more uh, perfection uh, uh, for executive president. I left Pandora and took up the presidency of Lacoste. I stayed three years there. When, when I began at Lacoste, I was already uh, head of the council of uh, UNICEF in Brazil. Uh, I was half of the, ha head of the board of UNICEF in Brazil. That was very funny because I, I was two years as, 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 as uh, 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 president of the board at, at the UNICEF. And some people who are present here remember that. Oh, Felix and so on. So, so excellent present. Then we had that that moment on how to work with philanthropy, uh, and uh, in a very powerful way. So we launched we launched a million opportunities. This program exists until now. I think you folks work with UNICEF in this line, and I decided to struggle for uh, boards. I was called for the interview. I, I was interviewed by 100 investors when I took up the board of Vale. Vale is a very important Brazilian mining company. Uh, yeah, it's two, the board is two men and a secret, and the secret is myself. So uh, that year we began a big, a big achievement. So the next assembly of the board, another two women will join. So I'm very happy that uh, I put a black woman in the fiscal council. Uh, these are these are stories that we can consider in a country that has 52% of, of women and 38% of the people. 
are CEOs and 14% of uh, women present, uh, present. So we are to 4.6. If 4.6 are women who are presidents of board who are not inheritors, and so we look at uh, we look to the plurality. There were 0 0.4. That was my person, myself. I was a CEO of a global company. You know how many are there now? Zero, because I'm no any longer in a global company. So now in this moment, a country that has 56% of black people, and black and mulatto, has zero women sitting in leadership seats. So as an advisor, I decided to act uh, strategically to know whether I manage I manage that. And then we change certain certain figures. I'm also a consultant at the stock exchange. I I helped to to format this public hearing, and then I carry on uh, my road as a, a, a advisor, a businesswoman. I want to see many women. I want to see many of the my people for the plurality that I. I champion, I want to see many, much more black people sitting in that public here that I see here, and, and this public sitting in the leadership. And we, we cannot fear the challenges to say that the company opens to, to learn with pleasure how to bring uh, more variety. And here's the, the, the transformation. It's so simple to say that. Often I'm invited to leave the place, but it's part of the process. Thank, thank you very much. That was very good, Rachel. Uh, the challenge about the boards and seats sit, sit in, in boards, people who have the pen in their hands. I have been talking about this on the environments I, I frequent, like at the ESG. And much of what we achieve in our place, but much still to be done. So we ask, who is going to leave that seat for us to, to, to take that place? This is a big question of the majority, but, but, but becomes a majority, not necessarily a majority. We are not a minority, but we are minorized. So this is a talk for more than 59 minutes. Uh, Chris. Yeah. Yeah. Perhaps we don't have to leave that, sh that chair. Perhaps the innovation will bring new areas of opportunity. If this is a thing, uh, it's a dangerous thinking. So we're not. We won't be able to, to go for it because we'll fear. It's that is human. Or else, yes. When I talk, when I tell you that nowadays 38 for 62, so there are more men than women. As, but I sat in that in that seat as a president because it was a woman, it was a man who put me there. So I count on the lies. I count on talent as well. I count on people saying, "Look, the same seat is for you or you." for the man or for whoever, and I, I see this diversity that first was, earlier was a factor of exclusion. Uh, we have to be, the way to be dealt with must be the same opportunity. Otherwise, uh, otherwise so I'm generating a society which, which is totally unevil, uh, uneven on the opportunity. What we have to do is the responsibility of to generate university because the values, everybody has its own. I'm Zoraide Gomes. I, my, my name as activist is Christmas Brothers. I'm from the Northeast. I was born in a beach in Pernambuco. I came to Rio at the age of 14. At 16, I think I, I began to notice myself more than people see me because they'll, never, they'll ever see me. So then I began my activism, my feminism, and my personal turmoil. 
like in, in your world. When I look at this this public, I told uh, Marina, where are the black people? Where are the black women? I'm looking. I'm looking for my tribe. But we will at some point we will find a much much more mixed uh, public than this moment here. So and so, our platform of activism. I began act, my activism at the age of 16. Look at the women health on uh, health prevention health and education because I did not have, I did not have that neither in my childhood or in my my teens. As I was I was early teenager. I thought I can I, I can meet this society that. Uh, in Morro dos Prazeres, here in Santa Teresa, it's very close. Everybody is invited to go there, Inclu including the uh, people are watching us uh, by YouTube. And we began to build uh, tools from inside. So what Edu said has much to do because I never arrived. So we began to think on, on several methodologies and technologies that there is uh, uh, inside a a slum and more of the is a collective joint. Uh, and many technology many tools for the technology to evolve that population so they they found me in a, in a newspaper story and they invited me to get to know technologies that connect everybody right so I see I understand nothing about it but I want that because my CEO uh, they, they told me something very really important. They said, technology is a much driver of opportunities. How to create a tool? And there is a, a, a tool, a final ending. So we're able to plan and to, to uh, build capacity, generate uh, income to all the people in Brazil. So not, not only build themselves professionally, have a, a, a life story that must be assessed, and also uh, to enter the system that that denies them. That So as, as a big driver of education, a big uh, business of social impact that uh, builds capacity, qualifies, generates jobs and income for the, our days, our foundation has students in 23 states in Brazil, we have uh, we aim the presence 100% online. Pandemics made us leave the presential present, and we learned that technology can unite us. And how? Uh, right from the beginning, we had the Vina Web as an important tool for digital integration, and not only for gender uh, equality, because we still have. Uh, we can learn anything in that uh, in that space, but nowadays we have over 5,000 young people uh, em empowered, and they all go to YouTube, and I, I find myself the most achieved person in the world. Although I don't understand much about technology, I'm not a designer, I'm not a programmer. Uh, what we teach is this. I have boys and girls in, coming from different slums in different places in Brazil who are doing computer programming for big companies. Uh, so in this five years, we have this beautiful journey. And our studio is on the web. It's a way to come here and see if you can want to join us. Uh, let's see the, the black people of the uh, slums. They have talent, and they can learn language and to master this language and do it with quality. Uh, uh, to run with part of your company. So, so uh, take them. Uh, let's hack this system. Let, uh, let's join, enter the technology companies uh, and show that the Brazilian youth has power. All they need is opportunity to see themselves as a power. And our portfolio is, is very subtle because we come from a generation that's not learn, was not used to learn and to research. So here is Mariana Thiago, that's my coordinator with my, in my team. She's 22 years old. She lives in São Gonçalo, a suburb, and 
the Wynal Web is her home. Is the home that when we inspire from young person to young person, everything is easier to believe in the capacity that many people do not give importance to. So that's the moment of creating this new normal. We need to take off the blind from our eyes and see the opportunities uh, and ask, what do you want? Uh, that's what we ask. Not everybody goes to the technology, but always will find themselves in the market that exists with millions of opportunities, with open vacancies, with no uh, skilled uh, labor. Uh, uh, we have to look to, to, to this youth. I'm a great champion youth because in my youth, very few people uh, believed in me. So I can only think of all women like you and like you and many others inspire, have inspired me. Uh, uh, in a moment, I was feeling alone. Uh, I found inspiration in other women. Alberto, after all of this, I hand over to you. Well, after all of this, I have the most conventional resume than everyone here around me. I have a do beside me as a mission of life. Gerando Falcões, which is to be doing work out in the slums, which is a big objective. It's wonderful, incredible. On my other side, 0.4%, the exception of the exception. And Chris, I am surrounded by people, I can say a bit, because this is happening. People who make it happen who do make a difference. In the beginning, I spoke about the mission of life, the mission of their lives. On our end, as a great corporation of Brazil, we have here our commitment with several of the initiatives to improve people's lives. And the advantage is that we may impact a lot of people in our company as well. We in education want to center because education generates jobs. We want to have several initiatives, for instance, in Croton, Ianguera, which is one of the most important education institutions in Brazil. They have a paid course, undergraduate course. They also have the free course. It is a module of the paid course. We started this initiative 12 months ago, and we have 200,000 courses already registered. So it's quite a figure. It's quite an impact. We have Tim Institute, which intention is to bring education as, as a, an endeavor. We have 700,000 people. These numbers are huge. So the idea in the panel is to be able to invite you and to actually give you another step ahead, because by ourselves, we won't go anywhere. So here, the experience that you bring, the potentiality of adding and enriching what we're doing will make it even more efficacious. So this is why together in a, a partnership, which is that Favela 5G. So you put technology available and you give them opportunity for people in the slums to be doing things. It's, it's just an opportunity after all, but you have built, and you need to build an ecosystem around to turn opportunity into real life. And I think it's what we're going to be focusing on the next few months because technology is an enabler, enabler. It's an end. But there is context that makes people to stay, to keep on studying, preparing. It happens, it's the context of those studying, it's much more complicated and challenging, but the idea is to bring the experience of people that are as inspiring as you all, is to launch this debate, is to promote awareness in the theme lines like diversity, education, and to try and take this and translate this into our company. We can then enlarge efforts. We can make it even more tangible to our 
clients in the end of the day in Brazil. So it's a great honor, really, to have you three with us today, because I think the first step of a journey that is very interesting that we'll be able to work together. So diversity, for instance. We did have a talk with Jason a bit before. Diversity, to diversify, is something that makes much more sense when it leads to an impact in the actual business. Diversity, the plural view, a plural view of people enriches the debate, enriches the business itself, but it is a means for a company to be diverse because in the end of the day we have better outcomes. This is also part of, of our social initiatives. In other words, if we can, for instance, take Favela 5G, which is not a social project, but it's a business project, with an, a business outcome which will have a positive impact in the social area, this is when we can do this without having to do any trade-offs, and therefore the impact can be much greater when compared to when objectives are not aligned. The idea of the first project that we launched is to make this a social project, but with trade objectives, so to speak. Do you want to say anything? No. I will have Edu speak before, because I, I will have Edu speak first. It's a project with you. And then, if you allow me, I would like to add a comment on the actual time to invest in diversity, because many times it's you, you get confused with the immediate outcome, the medium and long run results. But please, Edu, go ahead. When I met Griselli, I was introduced to him through Jairo. I was looking at the world moving around the 5G. And my reflection on all of it was that one of the things that we believe a lot in Gerando Falcões is that we have to deliver the best to those people who are poor. When I went to Medellin in Colombia, it was the most violent city in the world. The Cali, Medellin cartels, Pablo Escobar, everyone had to go to bed at curfew at 6 p.m. So they were able to put Medellin as one of the most innovative cities, even more than New York City and Tel Aviv. And what called my attention is that the same quality of what we were delivering in downtown Medellin was the same quality of the favelas, the slums, meaning a escalator, a cable car, the justice, a school, gas, basic water supply. Much of the concept of equity has to do with actually delivering more to those who are most in need. So what's equality? You have 10 cookies, five kids. You give two cookies for each child, then it's out. Equity is to give more to the child that is more hungry or hungrier, and three to those who are more in need. So I was asking myself, who will 5G reach? For those who have money, those who can buy an actual smartphone, which is enabled to have a 5G technology. Why? Then I was in a negotiation with another company that was very much halted when I met Jairo. Jairo introduced me to Griselli, and I told him about this dream I had. I said, Griselli, the slums of Brazil are the major startups of Brazil. They made Pelé, Neymar, Caipirinha, Samba, Carnaval, Edu Lira, these wonderful ladies here. So the Brazilian favelas, the slums, have to be seen as a rocket base for launching new technologies out in the world. When the slums don't work, it's because the state has not put their hand on delivering the services they have, too. So what I told Grisel is that we need to be a first runner-up. We have to have the first 5G slum in Brazil to position Brazil as a country who's capable of sorting out its issues. 
So, yeah, we sat down, signed an agreement, and Marti, the name was not Marti, it was Vina Italia, and they spoke to me so much, and they made an assembly, and there's a new name of the slum, now it's called Marti, because the mission is here, not there. And in there we have a project which is a 3D project with dignity and development. We combine public policies and social technologies to unleash value, to break down the cycle of poverty. Just to give you some piece of information, unemployment was 70% when we began the project against 12.5% of Brazil, the unemployment rate at the time. Eight months after, Marti is having from 70% went down to 19% unemployment. This year, we're going to have the first full employment slum in Brazil. So what I'm trying to do with my team is to create a prototype solution for the slum with up to 500 houses, meaning 80% of all slums in Brazil, and trying to escalate this, asking a federal government for money to put their hands in their pockets in the city halls, in the governments, to do what's right to be done. Poverty and inequality are a shame. You can get honor like a gladiator to fight dignity for something to get it. There needs to be opportunity. And when we don't build opportunities, inequality anywhere will affect everyone's citizenship, including here in this room. So I think it's a matter of honor for us to be able to build these models. And I would like to close by saying that I see the slum as a great platform, that we need to digitize it. We need to connect the APIs of this platform called Slum with the business APIs of Brazil to generate income, to dynamize the economy, to build opportunities. The GDP of the slums is larger than the GDP of Paraguay. There are more slums in Brazil than people who live in Rio Grande do Sul state. But public policies don't touch them. We've always waited for a top-down change. It never came and we were frustrated as a society. But what if we, as civil society, wanted to build these changes bottom up, as an example that we're giving here at Tim, of starting first, putting 5G in the slums? I think this can be a trend to Brazil. I believe the role of the companies is exactly to guarantee that technology will not be just a tool of inequality. On the contrary, it'll make people more closer together and with more opportunities. So please tell us, how can a, a company like Tim to generate that? It's not just technology. For instance, now we've just talked about the concept of taking 5G there, but it's not just to be that concept. The project itself, there are many months ahead, but the point is 5G. OK, starting point, technology is up, and so on, and then after, with the ecosystem, with the partners we have, and then we will do like uh, several activities of the call center. After the pandemic, the whole concept of a hotline, a call center, is completely different. We have 1,800 employees who are from home working remotely granting them a lot of flexibility and they're working at home and they talk to our clients from home. Nothing prevents the, the 5G slum project to put, given the availability of the technology, to put opportunities to have a job there because it's not just to do with technology but to create conditions that technology promotes the development of the slums, like in the case here with the Doom. So in there, we have to put this opportunity at the table. As I just said, we have a partnership with Croton Anyanguera, which is to make education. It's free, OK, free of charge. It's free to the clients. Any rage, anything that you do and play. And this is something that we can bring from there. Edu can set up an innovation center. Yeah, we can contribute with an innovation center. 
because we are avid consumers. We generate innovation. In other words, technology is a first step. But we will take together with us with a set of opportunities that can go beyond banking services. I was talking to the digital bank in the morning. We need to give different access to credit because we have payments. We have credit assessment. So we can have somebody who are who's there and with their bank account, with a history of payment in our services, we can have credit access. If we create a virtuous cycle that may contribute to the dream of overcoming poverty, but there are a lot of tools that we need to be taking there other than technology. So I think the full solution, which was to gather pieces to add value, Technologies and means, many data, lots of credibility that Tim as a brand has. And it's curious because you were mentioning something, Chris, that called my attention, which is to do with the talent repository. We have data saying that we will need labor, we'll be in shortage of labor in technology, and it won't be Ivy League people or university degree first line people. It's the, the labor shortage will be from the communities, from the favelas, the slums. I want to hear you, Chris, about these initiatives that you lead. What is your vision of technology of companies such as Tim? Wow, it's a big deal. When we talk about a new generation, about new digital opportunities, people that are consuming hours and hours in social media, that we, in fact, are having a process of guiding them through so that this time they dedicate to using the technology needs to be quality time, qu quality connection time, quality knowledge time. We know that you will not overcome poverty without knowledge. So looking at the impact after the pandemic, we knew that, but now we've gone deeper because we don't do technology with soul, but we do it with intention, not just thinking about the importance of a network to act and shelter the youth, but also to generate resources that are different mentally, intellectually, and especially having to do with education. There's a lack of labor, but it's not just any labor that they want. We know that these people are people that we want, and we can indeed represent them, and they have to say, yes, I want that. As we do today on Vina Web, we can not only train them, but to work with the issues that are far away from what the society is seeing out here. So a technology class where we teach them how to breathe, to meditate, how to deal with issues, with challenges, on how to look, instead of being reactive, being teamwork, working as leaders, understanding all the soft skills that the companies want from the staff. We're not just teaching code language, but we are preparing one more person in IT. It's not that, but we are preparing a citizen to the world. I think that education, knowledge is the key of transformation. I invite you. You know, you know I'm not inviting you because you know it all, but I invite all of you, the rest of you that are here listening and seeing us, of reflecting, ponder how much we need to invest in education in this uh, liquid world of technology. Time is now. Future is here. We need to invest more and more in this area. Wow, it's important that you mention the soft skills that are actually a turning point of the new economy. We shouldn't just look at hard skills with technical, social, emotional requirements that I remember that I shouldn't be called soft skills, but power skills, because soft skills show that it's less important. We know it's much more important. And I want to hear you, Rachel. You have a long trajectory. You've gone through several transformations in the world. How do you see 
how technology can impact these initiatives that we're seeing here and how much other that you know, probably many that you can bring to us. I'm thinking here, first, I don't, I don't, I don't believe the hard skill and soft skill. This is a blend. It's a blend that will bring the power. I was discussing this with uh, uh, one person about this. We have, they have to understand that it's human. There is the human factor in this, this whole story. It's the mix of the whole story. Uh, 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 I don't need. I don't need to be strong all the time. I don't need to need know everything all the time. So I believe it's a, you have a very pointed uh, uh, position. So now here is a position to tell everyone. Often we put ourselves, we, 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 put, we challenge ourselves to be 100% in everything, and then we are eventually we're not 100% nowhere. So that's why I tell people, work with me. And to do in such a way that technology matches what I live in my universe. Uh, nowadays, uh, in my story on Global Newspaper today, is how to, uh, to offer more space to leadership, to the black leadership. Uh, as they are talking so much about technology, I will take the liberty to make a little comment, a side comment, so that I can collaborate in an inclusive way. And then, how can I? You don't need to, you don't need to give me the 5G, because you gave already to my brother here, and I think we went all right. I see here. Uh, I, will, I will hassle you later about this. And then let, let's, let's do something focused because we need people, we need the, the, the technology people focused, and we need to empower these people and to give them a focus in certain sorts of public. But I put myself uh, at your disposal in a way in a more focused in what I know how to do nowadays uh, in a very satisfactory way. Uh, may, I, may, I, may I be daring? So, uh, she, she's, she's, she's preparing. How, how, is your, how is your sea level of diversity? So, uh, we have three, in the, in the board we have three women, and in, in the directorship, three women, how many? Three men, women, eight men, uh, three out of eight, and how many black? None. Okay. So, yeah, we have a, we have a <laughs> so we have a good point of argument. Uh, Yeah, well, she, she, she wants to, to bring us the 0.4% of hers. Uh, I want to post my candidacy to collaborate so that we could start to, to do out of this example. We're a good country for uh, uh, opportunities of action. So, so I put myself to your disposal because I have a book of black women. I have a book of uh, uh, executive black women, both in my board as in the sea level. So let's talk about sea level. I can, I, I, I put my book at your disposal. So, <laughs> I, I apologize. I think we must touch certain important points when he, while he brings all this, this power that comes from the favela, from the slums, and when she will bring all these this people who are, who are graduated, uh, they bring them to the market. If I do not have a, an important person on the sea level, I live this. If I don't have a main actor that understands what I'm talking about, the need to open opportunities as my people, the opportunity, the opportunity will be very weak. Would be not today, but tomorrow we'll think about this. And I don't want it tomorrow, I want it today. I need it for now. I'm, I'm stating to you, I'm, I'm stating, there is a lot of black people who are highly skilled. I insist with you, there is too, a lot of black women who are very skilled. 
So I add to what Edu said. I'm, I'm already talking. Okay, I support. I'll continue, I'll continue my philanthropic work. Yes, I support to put them. But I do, yes, I support putting people who who write to check. Do you do you agree? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You see, see the smile. Take a look at the smile of my director down there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So you see, see this one here in front of you. You see this one, Alfred. She's she's our uh, HR director. Huh? What's her name? Maria Antonieta. Okay. So you're a queen. It's not only your responsibility, but it's the responsibility of the entire board. It's the responsibility of the entire board. Now, now you see this woman here uh, with the black hair here in the third row. The one who's smiling. She's the director. Is a woman? She's a director. Black, uh, black hair. Is is he colorblind? Uh, yeah. No. Have. <laughs> Uh, do you know how many people she rolls over? 2,500 people under her command. Yeah. Okay, you'll, you'll join my book. You know how many women we have in leadership positions? Four. How many black women? Ten uh, percent uh, now, it's going, but it's raising. Uh, uh, so I, there is a lot of work to be done. Yeah, I, this figure will improve. Uh, when I engage myself with Tim. I give my word to Tim. If you want. Uh, not as an advisor, but I engage myself with you because it is important to have role, ma ma major roles to see more than a project, but opportunity of transformation. I engage myself. See people graduating in technology. So Tim can have me and I trust you. Tim, come count on me, and I trust you. If you, if you don't see me, if you don't see uh, Tim Alice, uh, uh, then it, I did not succeed. Very good. Albert. Yeah, yeah I, you were there. Yes, I was there. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of lot of people following us online. Yeah, exactly what matters is evolution. Uh, we're, uh, we're not well. It's a journey. And you're here to make us aware, to raise our awareness, and to inspire us. So that's the spirit of this talk. I agree. I agree. I, I agree. Okay, we agreed beforehand. We had agreed on, on this uh, before. <laughs> I was not supposed to say that. Walk the talk. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, these are talks which are not so easy. Until a very few few years ago, you folks here, international companies, in corporate boards, this this subject was about taboo. Who could tease the, the CEO of a company in such a way to bring other, uh, other components in his management of the company? It wouldn't be possible. Uh, and still, in many companies, you still can't. In 2018, I got a, an award, and I, I went to, to Switzerland. And there was a, 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 some presidents, and they always called someone a pop star or something. And that year, it was Bill Gates. It was uh, 13 uh, awarded globally. And then they called only one because 
out of those, there was only one woman as an executive, and so they called me. One day called me into the stage, the president said, and now you, you don't. Rachel, Rachel Meyer, a Latin person. Believe if you want, Rachel. Now you don't need to feel e either woman, and much less black, because you're part of the third of the three. And it was a silence in the public. He lost that. He lost that opportunity to shut up. Uh, that was a very uh, unhappy uh, com comment by him. And I had the opportunity to, to meet Bill Gates. He apologized for it. He what he understood, he, he hugged me, and, uh, yeah, and, and, uh, and he, he did, but he hugged me with so much care, like uh, he wanted to put me in his lap, uh, forget what happened here, and that, that's what it is. It's opportunities we have here of thinking um, when we're doing a full power, when, when we understand this sort of speech, uh, it doesn't fit any longer uh, as humans. Edu, Edu, you already talked about the Project 5G in the slum. In your opinion, what changes with the 5G in the Brazilian slums? We must be, it has to be part of a countrywide a country uh, plan for the, the all the slums be interconnected, to be connected, for instance, with a, with a talk by Rachel, by uh, the slum dweller to be able to access any time, to access YouTube and have a content, a first-class content like Rachel's talk. So to achieve, to connect to the, the unconnected, we need technology and the number of uh, slums doubled in the last 10 years. From 7,000, we jumped for over 14,000 slums. These are territories which are not digitalized. There is no presence of the state. Uh, every sort of service is lacking. And to be able to, to digitalize these territories is to bring opportunities and change and flood the space with laboratories of technology. There's so many vacancies which are not taken, in, uh, especially in, the, uh, in computer programmers, for instance. So it's part of a countrywide project to digitalize the Brazilian slums as well. Uh, much of what we're doing here is a way to, to find pilots that can be uh, uh, copied Brazil all over. We need good initiatives that should be standardized, become a model, and we can do upscale and more and to replicate better. So my argument is once you have digitalized the slums, you open a huge gate of opportunities for the people who live in these areas to have their own needs, to have their products to sell, to upgrade the local economy. The, most delicate nerve of the human body is the pocket. If people has, doesn't have money in their pocket, that's when they, they commit crime. So to understand digitalization as a process of modernization of the economy, to fight poverty and generate income, this is essential for us to overcome the inequalities. The ODS have been updated in 2015 for the eradication of poverty. Uh, the goal of the, the sustainable development by UN was uh, updated for OGS, uh, and they were updated for the eradication of poverty. If I don't have this mindset of bringing dignity to the slums, I'm not asking to change. I'm asking for dignity of jobs, a degree of access to the to people who live there, for them to have dignity. And from that moment onwards, I can try to make the people to understand that the sustainable goals, they are the same for everybody. And the access of the, uh, the ASG, the economic, environmental, economic, social, environmental uh, access on the governance, it will make sense.
for the whole ARCO system, but if I do not bring the start point, which means 75% of the population, I am I'm trying to reach a goal that will only reach the first layer of, the co of population. So how can I talk about net zero if I'm, or if I'm not putting the, 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 the I'm not doing the, the, the things on the table? How am I teaching with the, uh, with the carbon credits? I don't say I'm not saying that's not important. Nowadays I'm studying for 12 years. I've been studying the issue of sustainability. And, and the breaking umbrella and so on. But when I, when I go to capacity building, I see that they, they are hungry. They, the, the pain of hunger that when I, you know, it, it's, it doesn't go through the cycle, it, it stays stuck in the person's mind. When we were talking about sustainability, think on the eradication of poverty. And you folks from team, you have an engagement here that you have a first and second step. But it's only a first second step. There's much more to be done. That's when we bring knowledge and we open gates and gates and windows. What can I do? Then we have to do capacity building to direct the people. So these are processes that often we have to, to volunteer to bring uh, cues, to bring knowledge, to bring something of sometimes only you have. Uh, and it's not only responsibility of the corporations to eradicate poverty. It's not the responsibility of individuals when they offer technology. They're not only their responsibility. We have often to leave from that seat and do a neck test to understand how how vulnerable is your environment? Uh, and if, if as much of your people, you have a, a responsibility only of your bottom line, and this is not real. So then comes the responsibility of one person, and this responsibility cannot be of one single person. We have to volunteer to, to attribute meaning to, to the cultural transformation. It must start from you, from us. I repeat, it's fantastic what you're doing, but the transforma transformation starts with the individual. I went through this when my daughter shaked me. I, I, I always look and the rest, I always ask something extra to take. So I opened the, the, the windows. My daughter was with me. I said, Look, look, poor guy, this guy, let's, we got to do good to the next guy. Why, why, why are you pity with him? Why are you pitying? Oh, why? Poor guy is in the street, he's out and say, I agree with you, a poor guy, but, you, but you're giving him food. There's a society that conditioned him to that. So, you cannot feel too much of doing that. It's almost your responsibility. So there are many thoughts that we have to unbuild to do such that what you bring into the slums and the communities becomes action. Because my action, even if it's not the slum that the slums that Edu is supporting, let's do the neck test, see your surroundings. See, how are you moving around? I think it's a great lesson that we learned today is that all of you present decision makers and all the 10,000 people are watching us online, it becomes clear that when you're working with in team, you're not taking only telephony, data, and 5G. You're taking dignity, access to education, to financial services, to everything that the digital brings nowadays. And we know that we don't live without this. Right? With this, I ask you to to leave in one sentence, in one phrase, 
uh, like I said, now, what do you think you learned and you left as legacy for people who are watching us? Uh, your legacy in one sentence. One sentence, one phrase. I can't, I don't manage to. It's too much to, to, to synthesize it. One. The first word is gratitude and, and congratulations to team. Such spaces are very important for us to, to, to create, reflect, to think, and to issue ideas and to build new technologies and tools using technology as a bridge that gets people together. And the, the prize is to the, to the business. Uh, gratitude to all the companies that buy our studio uh, product and a business of social impact to this youth. And let's do it more. And ever and ever more companies will believe in our potency and validate all the things that all of us have shown. How much there is power uh, from the micro to the macro in, behind this, this this country to build all the the, the wealth of this plan, this plan, exactly in that place, which is considered a micro of potentiality that will build the wealth of all these uh, companies. Uh, my thanks to Tim. Rachel, your phrase? Or in Rio de Janeiro, when we look at this city, we see that God thought big when he made Rio de Janeiro and when he made Brazil. The Cristo Redeemer uh, statue overlooking the sea. We live in a place that was a dream, the, the God having built this, and does not match with a small dream. It's a, it's an unmatch. You see, Brazil, that's such a beautiful place, and to accept such a small dream. We have to have a big dream, like God had when he built up Brazil. So I think it's not only an individual dream. Brazil grew and has great stories in the individual level. And we need to develop a collective dream, a dream that encompasses a country with less inequality, with more opportunity, with more opportunities to everyone. That we what we valued too much in Brazil, that we get, start from five, can reach to ten, and undervalued the one who can, from zero, can reach somewhere. And a talk like this translated everything Rachel said, I think it's a talk that can, can have even more responsibility of building opportunities for all Brazilians, and then we will speed up, including my own dream of putting the poverty in the slums in a museum. Thank you all. First of all, I would like to thank the audience. It was very open, welcoming. I would like to dedicate to you a special moment of Fagarda Matai, the first African woman from Kenya who won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2004, I think. And she said the words that I do said, to dream is to foster the youth to dream, but they must rise and plan so that we can generate opportunities and that they know how to make them come true. Thank you very much. Alberto, oh well, the intention of Tim is, uh, Tim is to turn technology into freedom. This is our model. So it's a great pleasure to be able to count on you to always contribute so that this will come true. To turn technology into freedom is about this dream that it can be reached in many ways amongst the actions that we do and you do. But the plural aspect of these talks, the lessons we learn, exchanging ideas and experiences, this will pump up our, our capacity of making this intention, which is the soul of our company, to have even more impact to the Brazilian society. I'm really thankful to, for your participation. Thank you very much. Thanks. 
Agradeço. Eu, realmente, para mim, é um prazer. Thank you very much. For me, I am back home, as I said. I've never not worn blue in these 20 years. What happened here is very powerful. It's very strong. We're online, we're live. It is a commitment adopted by Tim. And I'm anxious for the next Tim Talks for this year and next year as well. Thank you all for your presence. Thank you. A selfie? Vai a selfie aí? Eu não passei, eu não passei, eu não passei. 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 Eu não